Hi, I'm Deborah Johnson. I'm a Christian life coach and Bible teacher. And this, this lesson is number 10 in the Truth to Go series. And the topic will be our journey can be messy. And um, to start off, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you are the wisdom and power. You, you um, deposited this in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we have his power and wisdom in our inner man. You've provided for us fully. Uh, your Holy Spirit is teaching our spirit these deep things as Christ the Word uh, not only stays in our head, but goes into our inner man to change us, to give us the mind of Christ, and also to change us into the image of Christ. We just thank you for these in Christ's name. Okay, first we're going to go over the gospel. Let's go to Romans 1, verse 15. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that be, are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now we're going to have two parts of the gospel here. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith, we believe in the faithfulness of Christ to go to that cross and die and pay for our sins. God himself um, set him forth as a propitiation, fully satisfying sacrifice. As is written, the just shall live by faith. So it's salvation, faith to faith. We believe what Christ did was faithful to go to the cross to do. And as we walk it out, the just shall live by faith. It's the same faith. We do nothing. It's Christ does all of it within us. Verse 18 is the second part. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's a judgment against sin and God is faithful. He will accomplish that one day. Right now he's manifesting his reconciliation to the world and offering the free gift of salvation just by faith alone. Okay, if you haven't trusted that, please get in touch with us at lifecoachesdjbj at yahoo.com or find a strong Bible teacher or uh, believer who is able to share the gospel with you. In the meantime, read Romans 1 through 5. It contains how you're just with God. Okay, um, in this particular um, lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about running the race. We do have a race that we're involved in, and there is two courses to this race. One is Satan's, and one is God's. So let's just talk about those things. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 9, and we're going to read 24. Uh, through 26. It says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Um, and we'll read 27 also. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. It's really um, the race that we're in is really our journey. And this race is not with other people. I do not believe that it is. Although the whole body of Christ is in a race, they have their own race to run. It looks very different. Our journeys look very different. The problems, the issues, the challenges, um, how much doctrine that we understand, and what problems that inhibit us from um, uh, 
um, inhibit us along the way. Um, Satan has designed a course for this world, and that course can um, sidetrack us. Let's just for a minute go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 says in verse 1 and 2, it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. As an unbeliever, you followed Satan's course. You had no choice. You were in Adam, and you inherited his sin traits, uh, sin in your flesh, and um, you, your spirit was dead. And so you could only follow the course that he's laid out for this world. However, in 2 Timothy verse, or chapter 4, we see that Paul was following a different course. Paul says in 4, 6, I am, now, I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Those three things, it seems like it's a goal. The end, at the end of his life, this is right before he passed off the scene and gave the baton to Timothy, he has fought a good fight. There's a fight. This race is a fight. I have finished my course. That's the race course. It's a marathon. It's the whole length of your life. And I have kept the faith. Um, keep that in mind as we go back here to 1 Corinthians 9. And so when it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, we all are running the race, and we are to put our whole f effort and self in this race. Everything that we learn, we use along the way, whether it's in this world, the things we learn from ba babe all the way up to adulthood, but also maturity in spiritual things. Our, as a spiritual babe, all the way up as you mature, God wants us to do that maturity. He wants us to grow and learn. And it says, but only one, just but one receiveth the prize. Well, in your race, only one gets the prize. That's you. So run that ye may obtain at that end time when you're standing before the judgment seat of Christ. You want to obtain that prize, that prize of righteousness, the reward that that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 3. <clears throat> and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Uh, in, in the marathon races in this world, they're wanting to get a temporal crown um, or recognition. We want each, an eternal crown. We want that crown of righteousness. We want an incorruptible crown, and that's what we strive for. So it's invisible, and our focus is to be above on spiritual things. And so it says, therefore, so run, not as uncertainly. You don't, you're not wondering whether we should be running and how. Paul lays it out, Romans 2, Philemon, how to run, how to do this course, how to fight the fight. Um. It's not as one that beateth the air, um, as if you're punching the air and it, it's affecting nothing, or you're running through this world, it's affecting nothing. There's eternal consequences, eternal reaping and sowing as a result of choosing to live unto God. It says, therefore, what we want to do is keep our bodies in subjection to Christ and to all that we learn. Lest that by any means, when you preach, it says, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We will be chewed up and spit out by Satan in the course of his world if we don't stay focused. That's why renewing in the, 
renewing of the mind is so important and not just head knowledge, just pieces of data. We need to place it here or allow God to place it here by thinking, dwelling on it and living it out, purposing to live it out. Okay, so there are two courses, Satan's course, and then the course Paul lays out through Romans through Philemon. It's that course of doctrine, and it's not just doctrine. It's our way of life. It's our way of thinking. It's the mind of Christ. That's what Philippians 2 talks about. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Um, we want to make sure that we do this on a regular basis so we don't go off back into Satan's ways. Okay, let's go to Philippians 3. Uh, as we go there, I want us to uh, stop off at uh, Ephesians 4 because this gives us part of the goal, really. Um, let me just see where it is. Um, trying to find where it is. Uh, Here it is in verse 12, for Ephesians 4, 12. This is what the, the, the actual prize, um, well, to win Christ. It, it's, it's to win Christ. This is what we want to do. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints. That's what pastors and teachers and apostles, their jobs were to help, help people finish their course and to perfect their faith. It says for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We don't want to be tossed to and fro um, by Satan's tricks and devices. We want to stay focused and clear. And so remember that as we go through. Let's go to uh, Philippians 3 now. Philippians 3, the whole chapter, we don't have that much time. But I do want to outline it. Take it um, in your own personal study. Look at the context of these verses. Think on these things for yourself because these are very important. Paul in this section is talking about allowing God to, to lay aside his flesh and any things of this world. He says, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. That's the goal. And, and be found, verse 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, see it's the prize of righteousness, which is of the law, um, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That's winning the prize. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death, death to the flesh in this world and resurrection life. We're living it, Christ in us. It's not I, but Christ. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Everything that Christ wants, he apprehended you to learn the doctrine, to allow it to work in you, to shine out of you. It's Christ himself. And brother, it says, I am um, not as though I have already attained, neither were already perfect. 
He's not perfect and has perfect understanding yet, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. I just read that. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Don't worry about what mistakes. Use them to learn and move forward, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's what we're going to win, win the race. It's our journey. It says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if any other thing, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you as you're open, press forward. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. We're to, to live what we know and keep open to grow and mature. That is the answer. That is how our journeys to look. There's a lot of mistakes and challenges along the way, but we want to stay focused above not on the mistakes and focusing on behavior, but what, but being thankful um, for what Christ is doing in you. Learn from the mistakes. He, all things work together for good as you believe, and so he'll work them for your good. Press toward the mark. That's how our journey can be messy, but at the same time you can um, fight the good fight, finish the course, and keep the faith. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for all you do for us in Christ's name. Amen.